Hi guys and welcome to the Review Preview Show. I am Foxy, that is Rob. Good evening Robert. You alright? Hello, I'm alright, but just to show you guys our commitment, we are stood outside the riverside, absolutely Baltic. I won't show you my hands because I can't move them. So let's talk about the games. We'll have a quick chat about Sunderland because it is going to be a quick chat. And then we'll just have a quick dissection of the Leeds game that we've got hopefully coming up tomorrow. So, Sunderland, poor performance, don't think we deserved anything. And really pretty much the majority of the game was them. Catamore actually led led from the front, uh, led, led, led his team from the front to a point. I was very surprised with the Catamore performance, I actually expected him to get sent off, but we know that wasn't where the trouble was. So let's just break it down. Azuro scored straight away. Ben Gibson, poor mistake. I don't understand why this guy um, can't jump, but he's looking worse and worse every week. I hate to say that. Where's the Gibson gone that was in the Premiership? Maybe he went when Chambers went. We don't know. That's something for you guys to get in touch with. So, poor goal, Azuro. And then you think, right, OK, we have a sending off, Salter on Triore, it was appalling, we'd all agree. About 10, 15 minutes later, so there we are, we're back in the ascendancy, let's capitalise on that. And what do we do? We don't do anything. We end up getting a sending off with the main man. Justified? No, it wasn't a sending off, but the way that he reacted, it was a sending off. Now that's something that needs to be ironed out. Where's the level of professionalism? I'll talk about that in a second. But the kid had, he, he was, he was, he was, it was harsh. You can tell by his reaction that it was something bad because players don't react like that, as we all know, unless something bad's gone on. But we managed to shoot ourselves in the foot. He goes off. We come out second half and there must have been some sort of war cry at half-time from Pulis. Can't have been much. We come out, we equalise. Great finish from Bamford. Great, great, great finish. Another, another goal from his repertoire of ability that he's got. Very intelligent. He's, all he's doing for me now is showing that he's got everything in the locker to be a real good player. So, again, consistency is key. We know that. But, great finish first one. Then we get a penalty of Son Belonga, the first thing he's done in a while. To be fair, it's the first opportunity he's had to do anything in a while. But it was a penalty. Great finish, led better. 2-1 up. Now, at that point, 10 men each in a derby. We are the better team. 2-1 up. Why aren't we closing these games out, guys? Tell me. They equalised through Williams. Again, it is another poor goal. He's just skinned down in. Didn't want to get close to him at all. I think he wanted a clock off. So we're two all. We don't play to the whistle. I don't care how much injury time there is. You play, you play, you play. Third goal from us, Bamford. Brilliant finish again. Great through ball from Bezic. Like the look of Bezic, I'm sure a lot of you guys do. Talented player going forward and coming back, but really like the look of this kid. It's great through ball, and Bamford actually made it a little bit harder to finish than he needed to, but again, that just shows the level of his technique. Good finish, 3-2. Here we go, what's going to happen? They're going to equalise, because it's typical. Poor marking, how on earth does he equalise from there? We don't know whether it was Shotton um, or Harrison who was picking him up. For me, it should have been Shotton because Harrison shouldn't be coming onto the field and picking up anybody. The set pieces should already be dictated who's going to pick up people. And if he is coming onto Markson, when he comes on and he gets on the post. But that leads me to another point. Where are we at with this Tony Pulis team? Because we didn't deserve anything from that game. I think you'll, I think you'll all agree. But we've managed to scrape a point. Didn't do them any favours, it certainly didn't do us any favours, especially after last night with Sheffield United. Uh, sorry, on Wednesday night with Sheffield United winning again. They've now gone three points in front of us. Yes, if we beat Leeds, we go level on points, but they've played a game less than us. We'll actually go above them on goal difference. We're plus eight. So, where does that leave us under this Tony Pulis team? We're not moving forward. We've made a lot of individual errors this season. Again, on Saturday we saw that. Why aren't these being coached out of these players? For me, there's not enough ability, professionalism. There's not enough quality at that club to do that. When you're making Jonathan Woodgate your assistant, first team coach, for me, there's a problem there. This guy was a banging footballer. Really, really, really top class footballer. But I don't think he's got it in the bag just yet. He may be one for the future, and I'm all about in-house promotion. That's what we're all about. But he isn't there yet. So where again does that leave us? Tony Pulis has been asked to overhaul the squad. He's got an 18-month contract. He said he's not going to stay after that point. His family don't want to live here. So what's he going to overhaul? His first move is to be put Woodgate in, 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 in as assistant coach, as first-team assistant coach, or first-team coach. I'm not too sure. Well, the cold's getting to me, guys. Bear with me. But his first-team assistant coach, or first-team coach, either way, like I said, it's not good enough. So what's his overall going to be? 
He's going to change everything, the ethos. He's been taught to leave the academy alone. But he's going to change, what's he going to change? The format, the diet. Is he going to bring in physicians? Is sports science? Is he going to bring in new coaches? Is he going to change the way we train? I very much doubt it from what you hear from footballers and other people who are in the game. Is that he's a boring person to play for. He doesn't have much variety in his training. And as a footballer, you want variety. So, again, where does that leave us? 80 months' time, let's say hypothetically we do go up. Where's that going to leave us? Because he's going to leave after 18 months. So even if we're in the Premiership, somebody else is going to come in and want to rebuild that club. We're going to fill the team up with players that suit his style. Someone else is going to come in and want to rebuild it. Then we're left with a terrible job in the middle of the season to try and keep ourselves either up in that league or get promoted from the Championship. So let me ask you guys, and please get in touch because this is a big thing for me. Where is our template? Where's our foundation that we're building? Where's the identity that we're striving towards? I don't think there is one. We look around, we see teams like Bournemouth, Leicester, Watford, Burnley, teams that are in the big in the big league, who've got a format, who've got a template, and they've 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 bought players to suit that, and they've built the whole club around football. We haven't done that anymore. We've brought a guy and he doesn't want to play like that. So I blame that on Steve Gibson. For whatever right he's done in this in this in this club, which he has, he's brought some amazing players to this club, and we've had some awesome times. We're a small club, guys, but we've got the biggest fans in the world, and it's not that we expect to be in a Premiership. It's that we've seen that we can be in a Premiership and function, and that we're capable of being there, and that we're capable of having a foundation under McLaren, under Brian Robson, that works. So that's been lost in Southgate for me. We've stumbled through managers over the last ten years without real any kind of again template, anything to move forward on for people to build. We've brought different style managers in who do different things and we can never have any continuity. So for me guys, this game tomorrow against Leeds, it's important for the fact that we don't want to lose because as a Borough fan I don't want to lose. But as a Borough fan also I'm quite confused because I don't want to go up with this team for the reasons that I've just mentioned. It isn't going to help us in the long run. I'd rather we take a step back now, we bring in a manager that wants to build a team that wants to pass, wants to create with youth and we have a foundation because I don't want to I don't want to lose my identity or my integrity and I feel as if that's what's happening right now but again guys, that's something for you to talk to us about the way we're going right now, we're not going anywhere fast Right, so let's talk about Leeds United not being very impressive in 2018 as you'll, as you'll all know we've only just got the first win the other night against Brentford they have had a couple of results in there which was against their promotion rivals, Derby and Bristol City, where they've had a couple of two-all draws, where they've actually come back from. Showed a bit of character, actually. So they are, they are a team full of character. But they have a bit of a British core with kind of a European flavour to it. So Liam Cooper at the back, as I've mentioned, uh, centre-back Scottish captain. Eunan O'Kane and Calvin O'Phillips will probably play in the middle with them too. British, uh, English and an Irish guy. Two defensive-minded players. Also, maybe Kamar Roof might play up front. Uh, talented player, didn't play the other night against Brentford. And then sprinkled around that, we've got Samuel Saiz, Alioski, Lasoga, Hernandez. So let's just break that down even further. This is a dangerous team, guys. Don't, don't be fooled by that. Yes, they haven't been playing very well recently, but they have got goals all over that team. It's kind of strange, really, because it looks as if Teams have run off and had a great result, great run of results, and Borough have just kind of plodded along, plodded along, and we're kind of in the same positions as these teams. I'm going to talk about the goal scorers, like I say, and, 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 and the, the dangerous players, but it's kind of been a tortoise and a hare seasons for me. We're the tortoise, everybody else seems to be the hare. We're plodding along, plodding along, and we're still in the same sort of position as these guys who were touted to be going up above us. So, this is a big game for Leeds United. A lot of their fans think it's a massive game. It's a six pointer. If they lose the six points behind us, if they win, they go level with us, but we're still ahead of them on goal difference. But, I digress, let's get back to the players. So, they are a dangerous team, like I say, they've got goals all over. Samuel Saiz is the man to watch, Spanish. Hasn't had as good a season as he's had this year. I think he's scored about five goals, a couple of assists. Five assists, sorry. But he was mega last year. He's been injured, I think, this year. And he's also just come back from a six-match ban for spitting, which tells you everything you need to know about the guy's temperament against Newport in the FA Cup. But he is a talented player. It was a bit of a coup when they bought him. A lot of La Liga clubs wanted him. We got him from a second division La Liga, uh, second division Spanish club, but a lot of clubs wanted him. He's one to watch. He's their main man. Along with Alioski, who plays on the right or the left, he's actually defended or plays for Macedonia. But he's played exclusively left or right across the front four for Leeds this season. Um, six assists, a few goals. Talented, talented player. Also, they've got the Sogger up front, who you might know replaced uh, Chris Wood, who went to Burnley. Similar type of player, uh, he's actually strong, he's big, he likes it into his feet. 
Again, that suits the way they play. Quite direct, not direct as us. 4-2-3-1. But the Sogger, powerful in the air. He'll be one to watch. If Gibson and I are around on the day, he will take them to pieces. He scored 10 goals this season, three assists. We talked about Alioski, we've talked about size, who's a man. Hernandez is another one who's chipped in a lot. So's Dallas, who's English, he's chipped in a little bit. But also within that, you've got Calvin Phillips and Union O'Kane, I've mentioned. Now, O'Kane hasn't scored in the league, I don't think, this season, but he's had three assists. Calvin Phillips has scored a couple of goals, he's had five assists. Good play with maybe Vernon and Eater and Berardi either side, full backs, and they will get forward. They like to sit deep in their half and play football, keep possession and look for a counter-attack. But they do also like to get shots off. Alioski, as I mentioned, loves a long shot. He loves working that touchline, but he's also quite aggressive. As his size, as is Calvin Phillips, as is Union OK, and they're an aggressive team. There's been a lot of red cards there this season. But, as we've mentioned temperamentally, these are people to target, maybe. Um, I think Alioski will probably be Mark Tra Traore. I think he'll try and stick to him. Whether he can or not is another thing. But as, as we have, and, and we haven't mentioned that, but Triori obviously is a ban, which is a massive plus for us. But it's about temperaments this game, and I genuinely feel if we can we can keep our temperament and be professional, yes, we can win. But like I said, we've got two options of scoring. Really, it looks like Bamford and uh, Bamford and, and Triori, but. That's it. If you nullify those, what we're going to do, and as we showed against Sunderland on Saturday, when we let a terrible, terrible team, no offence Sunderland fans, but I just want to be realistic, score three passes and should have won. Should have won. What are Leeds going to do to us tomorrow? I'm not going to talk about the reputation we've got at the Riverside and that we haven't done well against them for 20-odd years because I think you can spook yourself and it's been different teams and different eras, so I'm not all about that. But what I do know is, as I've mentioned, they're frightening. And they are, as much as I hate to see this Borough fans, but from a football point of view, they are a good championship team. There are a lot of average teams in this league, we've discussed that. But this is a team that, on the day, can, do, can go on a run and can get promoted. So where does that leave us? It leaves me confused, I think Robbie's too. Because the result against Sunderland didn't really do anything for us. And like I said, Sheffield United won the other night, which puts them further in front of us with a game, a game to play, a game to spare. So where do we want to be? I don't want to go up with this team, as I've mentioned about Borough uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking about that. I don't think this team wants to go up because it's only going to end up getting rebuilt. But I won't go over old ground. So I'm confused. As a Borough fan, I hate the fact that we've lost all week and we've been appalling all week or we've drew all week and we've been negative. But as soon as it comes around the match day, my positivity kicks in because I love this club like we all do and I want us to do well. But the long-term goal and, and realistically, even as an optimist, I don't want us to go up this season. So, like I say, I'm confused. Where does that leave us with the result? Rob? one all. I was going to say a similar sort of thing. I, a similar sort of thing. Sorry, guys, the cold is absolutely hammering me there, so sorry. 2 all, I think, or 2 one Borough. But again, that's my heart rule in my head. 2 all, I think. Look, guys, we've got a competition on for two season tickets next season. You have to get in it to win it. You have to subscribe, like, share, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You have to become one of our followers to have a chance of winning two season tickets. Like I say, even if we're in the championship, it's still free football, isn't it? So get involved with that, guys. And listen, whoever you are, wherever you are, peace out. It's in the blood.